Hi everybody. It's uh, been uh, two or three days since I've been down here messing with the Wells Index milling machine and uh, I've had some time to go online and do a little bit of research and uh, check out what was out there for uh, possibilities for good deals on bearings to replace the bearing, the two bearings that I want to replace in the unit here. And uh, I was able to find some, some good new old stock bearings and I found, a, I mean, bearings are so many different brands um, and you can find people arguing one way or another for one brand, saying one's better than the other, but the uh, continuing theme that I kept coming across was that for the most part, the Japanese made bearings, like Nachi for instance, uh, and I'm not sure if I'm even saying that correctly, um, it's considered to be a good quality bearing. Uh, you hear a lot of people talk about, well, the, Say, they say Torrington bearing is a great bearing, uh, and then somebody said, "Well, yeah, but the Timkin supposedly bought out Torrington, and that some of the bearings that they're selling under the, I guess the Torrington name may have been actually Chinese-made cheaper bearings." Um, there are other bearing companies out there that are, you know, clearly Chinese that are selling really dirt cheap bearings, and some people say, "Hey, they work perfectly fine," and other people say, "Hey, they don't want to trust them." So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to stay with like uh, SKF or um, you know uh, I would consider the Nachi, the SKF, the NTN, um, uh, FAG, and um, I'm trying to think of the other name that's eluding me at the moment. But a lot of these really good bearing names, I'm trying to find some new old stock stuff out there on eBay uh, that I can get cheap, and I'm pretty much. I've got a few possibilities there, and some of these sellers have uh, best offers, so I'm going to submit some best offers tonight and see if we can't get lucky and steal a bearing at a dirt cheap price. I'm talking like 15 to 20 bucks shipping included, and for a bearing that size, that's really uh, quite reasonable. And I'm gravitating towards uh, either a fully shielded or a rubber sealed, bear, uh, permanently lubricated bearing. And uh, so tonight, I'm going to work on getting these old bearings off. So I was able to clean up and scrape around here a little bit and uh, came to the conclusion that this bearing right here is pressed on to this shaft in the middle that goes all the way down. And then the bearing is pressed into this part right here, which actually looks like it's designed that it could come it could come with the whole bearing right off so I think I'm perfectly fine with putting a puller on here and pulling right here and pulling this whole bearing off of here and then once I have this off of here it should be a piece of cake to press it out of the back side of this because I'm betting that there's a something that uh, I'll be able to to rig something up on the press to pop that out if I need that much force even. All right, so now we're gonna find out just how tight this is a press. And I did wanna make note of how far that's on there. And it looks like it's on there just far enough to expose the groove that the snap ring was in. Okay, that's not that tight a press fit at all. Which is good news because that means I don't have to be worried about putting so much force on this bearing carrier that I deform it. And in case you're wondering why I say that it wasn't that much of a press fit, it's because it broke free almost immediately. That little pop noise is a dead giveaway. When things get a little dicey is when you're putting all that force on there and you're not hearing any movement or any popping noises at all then you know you really got a tight bearing. But I can feel with every twist of this puller, I can feel that little movement. But I have reached the end of my <laughs> limit on how far I can pull this off with this particular piece I've got in here. What's happening is I'm getting to the end of the range of that screw, not to mention the fact that I've now pulled this off so far, I'm hitting hitting this piece here. For those of you who don't know what this is, I've used this quite a few times on 
situations where I needed to do a certain kind of press. This is actually from the old Arctic Cat project. One of my first YouTube projects, the old Arctic Cat ATV. This is a front uh, CV joint and uh, axle there. And uh, glad I didn't throw that out. That, that thing's coming darn handy. You can really see the back of the bearing from this side here. It'll be easy to pop that out. Hey guys, three bearings in here. The one I just took off is the big one that I first saw here. And there's another one in here. Now that one actually seems pretty good. Maybe we won't replace that one. Okay, so we got us another snap ring here. And it looks like if we remove this snap ring. Oh, these snap ring pliers are a little bit too small for this job. I have to put them in this way. Oops, I got to turn the camera on, but I did get this off. I just I repositioned these pins a little bit further out. That one really and was able to get just enough pull or spread, I should say, on that to get that out. And that snap ring is identical to the other one, so I don't have to worry about mixing those up. But that is going to allow this to come off. So we've got a uh, almost like an oil light bushing in there, and there's actually a couple of. All right, so that's key to this shaft. So let me set this aside for a second. Just look at give you a look inside here. So you can see there's another bearing inside there. This is all that rust I was looking at that I couldn't get to. Yeah. That does sound like it might have a little bit of crud in it. Nowhere near as much as the other two. All right, big old snap ring in there. If I can get that snap ring off, it looks like this will slide up off of here. Yeah, I'm gonna want to clean this up, take this apart just to get it all nice and clean, anyways. I could really, you know, all the tools I end up finding and buying. Never run across a good used set of snap ring pliers. All the snap ring pliers that I've either bought new or acquired here and there have been low quality. Actually, those little black ones that came with the Wells Index cabinet. They were practically, um, they were pretty decent. They're just too small for this job. If this wasn't down inside here, I could get a screwdriver under the edge of that right now and pop it right out. All right, now that's just driving me crazy. Maybe if I get a real screwdriver to tighten it instead of a piece of junk. Hmm. I can't get this snap ring off. This is going to be in the way. This little roller. 
I wonder if you line it up right, right where the gap is, if it fits. Nope, don't think so. So I'm guessing... Oh, well, now that's funny. I was going to say you take this nut off to take this roller out, but if I take this nut off, obviously this stud can't move out that way because it's going to hit this. So I'd venture to guess what you're supposed to do here is back the ring off, the snap ring off, as much as I did. Get this to pull up part way so that this clears this, get your snap ring out of there, and then finish pulling it all the way off. The problem I'm foreseeing right now is going to be getting a puller in here. Unless that's such a loose fit that you can actually pry it. That'd be nice. I mean, uh, I don't want to damage this sheave. So they're they're not relying on strictly a press fit of the bearing onto the shaft to hold that in there because they've got a snap ring if it was a really tight press fit they wouldn't even need the snap ring I, mean, I could drive some I could drive that under there and try and use a wedging action but I, I'm worried about damaging this I wonder. I'm trying to see if that lifted one side higher than the other. Doesn't look like it. That worked. That worked. Now, there's just enough room to get the puller in there. I was real gentle doing that. For those of you who were cringing. So the only thing holding it on now is the snap, snap ring. That big bearing right there comes out from this side. What's the number on that one? Is that a new one? No, that's another 6012. 6012. Good. This is an NSK bearing in here. But, anyways, the reason why I'm glad that that's the same number is now I don't have to research a third bearing number. The, uh, 6012 is the number of that bearing right there, I think. Memory served me. This this bearing is made in Poland. Oh no, this is a 6212. The small one's a 6009. So this is a third number. This is a 6012. Not a 6212, this is a 6012. Ah. Oh yeah. Now that I now that I have it out of that housing and I spin it, I can feel it. Yep. That's a uh, That one needs replacement too. That's a candidate. So I just pressed in there. There's a snap ring in there.
Well, that I didn't push that. Push that issue. That's one of those ones that when it lets go, sometimes it snaps your finger. <laughs> Why am I doing this with these Dr. Bizarro gloves? Well, because they were handy. Well, I can get it started. Oh, I'm really damaging that bearing. Good thing I'm replacing it. I slipped and I hit the uh, I hit the shield and drove the shield down in and it's impinging on the internals there. And this is gonna come out real easy in the press. Try one more thing. There it goes. Now it definitely moved. Oh yeah. Hearing protection. All right, looks like that solves the mystery of how this bearing is removed. Now that I have the other sheave off, I can see there's another snap ring here. <laughs> 